I would like to share with you today five fundamental principles about investing, life, success that I have uh, written about and have basically accumulated over the last 15 years. I'm 34 years old right now, so we're going back way until I was about 19 to today. 15 years, I have found five principles that are recurring themes. I consider these to be somewhat essential truths, and they apply to life, they apply to investing, health, wealth, wisdom, all of those things. And for the most part, I haven't found anything necessarily that refutes these ideas. So leave a comment if you think that one of these ideas is wrong, or it doesn't apply, or there's a better idea that more thoroughly describes it. I would certainly like to know. Again, these ideas are just mine. These are my opinions. Do not take this as major financial advice that everybody should take. But I think if you listen to these ideas, they will resonate with you. If you're young and you haven't heard of any of these ideas before, you're about to get some wisdom. There's going to be some serious knowledge bombs dropped in this video. The first principle is that your expected output is proportional to your input. Exactly what the proportionality is depends on what the thing is. And is it linear? Is it constant with time? Probably not. But the idea is what you put in, you get something out. If you spend hours each day at the gym, you're going to get some output of physical strength. If you spend years studying a particular field, mathematics, economics, business, you're going to get smarter in that field. You're going to have knowledge in that field. But you need to put in some effort, some kind of input in order to get anything out. Of it. it applies both in the mental sphere, it applies to the physical, and it applies to money. Dave Ramsey mentioned this. Someone had asked the question about what is the one key indicator of one's ability to retire when looking at some kind of an investment, 401k or IRA, What's the one thing that was the main contributor to one's success in retirement? And Dave Ramsey at this time said that he thought it was the yield. It was the percent return on whatever the investment was. That was the key indicator. But actually, in the video, he described, no, that wasn't necessarily it. It was actually the amount of money that people were contributing. Yields are important. You want some kind of high return investment, but you aren't going to make a lot of money unless you put something into it. And those who were able to contribute more ended up getting more as a result. Another concept to understand about input proportionality to output is diminishing returns. At a certain point, the amount of return that you're going to have on something is going to change. And for each thing in question, it's going to vary. Initially, you could put a little bit in and get a lot out. But over time, you may have diminishing returns as you put that same amount of effort in. Principle number one talks about input and output. Principle number two that I've discovered has to do with the time delay between the two. For all things, whatever it may be, the time between receiving the expected output and when you have that initial input will vary depending on the task, the thing in question. In the simplest case, if you work a nine to five job and the payroll is paid every two weeks or a month, you can expect that your two weeks of work, the previous two weeks, you will get paid for those previous two weeks at the next pay period. There's a clear input and expected output and you know when that's going to happen. But for other aspects of life, it's much less clear and trying to know more about when you should expect a certain result is very important when it comes to sticking to a task. In my case, when I was getting my PhD, the output was publications. Uh, you need to publish your research in, in a peer reviewed journal and it can take years. I mean, years of work before you get remotely close to having a peer reviewed published paper. It can be very frustrating if you think that that process should be done very fast. I've spoken to many graduate students about the process and that they really want their work to be published. But in many ways, it takes such a long time. And if you're a professor doing this for decades, you understand how long it should take. But if you don't have a, a reasonable expectation about when certain things 
can be done, you might quit inadvertently or at the wrong time. Having a good idea about when you should expect to see that output result will help make sure that you don't quit too early. As many of you know, I am a huge, huge fan of Benjamin Graham, Warren Buffett, the principles of the intelligent investor, and the third principle very much falls in line with their philosophy. And that principle is the slow and steady approach basically to everything. I don't believe in overnight successes and get rich quick schemes. People who have achieved success in the way that we see it put in a lot of time, effort, their input is super high, but their output, you know, what they're expecting is super low, and then all of a sudden it just swings and it jumps. It is very rare, if not impossible, that somebody just starting off from scratch just makes it, just makes it big. Even big movie stars, actors, actresses, they all had lots and lots of small, minor roles before they eventually got their big breakthrough role and became superstars. The long, slow, and steady approach does win out in the end. This is something I've experienced from learning chemistry. I've spent hours and hours and years of practice. My progress in Taekwondo is based on years of practicing consistently every day. And even YouTubers who are out there and are, are killing it, they're super successful. You know, if you go into their channel and you just scroll down, there are times they've been doing this for years, but they all had these small, humble beginnings and they just worked at it slowly and steadily. And it also applies to investing. Your money will grow slowly and steadily. Money that can be gained very quickly can also be lost very quickly. And money that is earned slowly, over time, methodically, carefully, it's a lot harder to lose. In fact, I even think, and I don't know if this is a controversial topic or not, or a controversial idea, but I'm gonna throw it out there. I think that a lot of the economic hardship that businesses are experiencing amongst the pandemic is not necessarily caused by COVID, but rather revealed by COVID. Now, some companies, it's just purely luck, weird situational things, but there were some companies that just have huge amounts of debt before COVID. And when COVID hit, it just, it killed them. So yeah, I guess that's my controversial topic. Let me know what you think. I am actually kind of curious. Do you agree? Perhaps you haven't heard that opinion before. The fourth principle is intelligent effort. As you are working on a thing, you should be working intelligently on it. What is the best use of your time? How are you going to maximize that output for as small an input as you can. I think probably one of the clearest examples of this is if you're trying to lose weight and you're trying to lose belly fat in your midsection and you just do tons and tons of crunches. Now you might not be like a fitness person, but I'll tell you this, it doesn't work. The most effective way, the thing that really helps you lose it is actually the diet. Many health and fitness experts would argue that the diet when it comes to losing weight is like 75, 80% of the results. Exercise actually makes up a tiny, like a small portion of, of how weight loss really works. Focusing on that small 20, 25% is not gonna help you achieve what you're trying to get. I think I spent so many years just doing crunches, trying to, you know, get the elusive six pack. It was a very inefficient approach to fat loss and, and becoming lean. It was just not the right way to do it. If I spent more time and effort focusing on my diet, I would have made significantly more progress if I stuck to that strategy than a strategy that I thought was helpful, but really it wasn't helpful at all. Another way of thinking about this is the difference between being busy and making progress. Sometimes we're just busy. We have a lot of things going on and we're making some progress. It's small bits of progress, but it's not working on something that's meaningfully making progress. So I ask you in whatever thing you're doing to try to be successful in whatever thing you want, whether it's friends, family, money, fitness, investing, are you spending your time 
making progress in these areas. Now, with regards to the fifth and final principle, the other four principles are based a lot on data, evidence, whether it's anecdotal. I think many of you, if you do some research, you'll find that there are many other people as well as other successful people who have gone through similar things, or you have data points to support that conclusion. The next concept, though, is something that I'm gonna say it makes a lot of sense and I think it will resonate with you, but at the same time, I don't have that much proof to demonstrate. And that is about cheating. And basically, you should never cheat. You yourself shouldn't cheat, and you should never cheat others. One way or another, call it karma. If you cheat other people, you only succeed in cheating yourself. I guess basically the last point is all the other points, you have to do them ethically. You can't break the law. You can only break yourself against the law. We can think about cases like Bernie Madoff back in the 2008-2009 recession, where he cheated so many people and they lost so much money. He ran this huge Ponzi scheme. His life, his immediate family are just ruined. Indefinitely, like forever. Warren Buffett has managed to make a lot of money, be very successful in investing, and he has a moral integrity about him. Well, folks, that was 15 years, basically boiled down to five major ideas. Almost every aspect of my life can be covered in these five basic fundamental principles and ideas. I hope that it expanded your mind, that you now think about things differently. Perhaps you knew about input and output, but you didn't quite consider the time delay aspect in when you would receive the output. Or you didn't consider how long it would take and that you need to have a slow and steady approach when it comes to achieving whatever goal your output is. Or maybe you're just cheating people of things and you should stop doing that. At the end of the day, I hope you learned something. And if you did, I hope you like this video, comment, subscribe. I'd love to hear about what you have to say. All right, I'll see you soon.